Thank you, thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> This is home for the next five nights. Really quick, nice bunks and uh, storage. Plenty of storage for gear and beverages. And these are state rooms. Most charters have one single room for everybody to sleep in. This has two bunks per room. It is currently 26th of December, the day after Christmas. We literally left our hometown at like 11 p.m. last night, made the drive down. We made good timing because nobody was on the road. It was amazing. And uh, yeah, we were celebrating my dad's birthday yesterday. So that was pretty awesome. Got to spend time with the family. But cool thing was Christmas landed on a Monday and the next day is Tuesday. And of course, a lot of people had work so a lot of my family jammed out early anyway we're gonna be targeting bluefin is the number one species to target and right now there haven't been talks of any other species we have airplanes this boat literally has airplanes up in the sky searching for us ahead of time so we're traveling about 130 miles out of san diego out of seaforth landing and hopefully we can get on a good flight How rude of me. A couple familiar faces on this trip. <laughs> That's how you know it's 11 o'clock. But yeah, we got Henry and Bob. They're with us today. And uh, man, it's good company. Really night, good company. Night number one. Night number, yeah, one. night number one. There's really no schedule. If the captain says we're on fish, we're going to get on fish. So. That's the, the update. Change your face. He's super aggressive. They're all spread out around us. It's all a few boil back there. Fly line. Off the bow, guys, change your baits. On the spinning setup, nice. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's a Christian right here. <laughs> nice. There we go. Woo! Bluefin, we found him. Yeah. You're on? Look at you, Bob. Woo! <laughs> hey, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that was coming a little weird. Yeah. All right, so I didn't get enough in that one time, but I'm out here. They're looking at our chum back there. I got nice fresh bait, guys. I switched out. 25 pound test all the way. Just starting Talk to come shot. back under us. And then I'm going to a size two mustad hook. Did you get one? No. Bob got two. Fresh 
on the Okuma Monterey. <laughs> Drinking salmon halibut rod. Ooh. Look at me. Yeah, slid up the line, huh? Yeah, bud. Got it right. Thank you. Under, 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 under. There she is. Nice. Don't pull on that slack line, guys. Nice job, Bob. We were scratching away at those small grade bluefin tuna and the captain heard that down south, a little ways, the yellowfin tuna were biting really, really well. So we called it early and we headed farther down south overnight. The next morning, the crew set up trolling rigs to help us locate these schools of yellowfin tuna. And first thing in the morning, we get a triple up and now we know where they are. So let's fish. If you've never fly lined before, it is an exhilarating feeling because you're feeling your bait swim out into the great beyond. And all of a sudden your line just starts flying off your reel. And man, you just pray and hope that the hook and all of your knots hold for when you close your drag and that line gets tighter and tighter. And we're using circle hooks, which means that the hook is kind of pointed in. And that is for when the fish swallows the bait and as it swims away, when you pull your drag, it like tightens and it tries to pull the bait from out of its throat. And, and that hook buries itself, hopefully in the corner of the fish's mouth. One thing I was extremely excited for with this trip is I knew there was a lot of experienced guys going. So anytime I saw somebody that was catching fish regularly, I would really start to pay attention to what they were doing. To my right is a guy named Steve who's been doing this a really long time and he is definitely a hot stick. And I noticed his bait was hooked on the shoulder when he casted it out and I asked him if he was hooking them on the back and he said that he's shoulder hooking the baits 100% of the time. And if you're not sure, here's one of our new friends, Bill, explaining how to shoulder hook a bait. Get the light on. I mean, you're just trying to get that thing in there. Where at? Let's see. And then it comes up and under like that. And you don't want to hook it too 
but that was probably a little bit shallow. But you know, your thing's wobbling around, you just kind of press. See, I'm holding it down there. If you hold it up high here, you can press and get the point in. See, it's in, and then you come up and under. And if you try holding it down here at the shaft, you can't get that press in, it just doesn't work. It's very hard, so you want to hold it up high, like up here. And then you can press in, and it goes. taught that because I was having a hard time too. The reason this is so effective is because the fish are usually beneath the bait looking up and if the bait has the hook on the shoulder it really can't see the hook at all and it does not impede on the bait's swimming action at all. You can actually reel it in a little bit and it'll act like a lipless crankbait and you'll see Bob gets bit doing that exact same thing when he starts shoulder hooking his baits. So from this trip forward, I am a firm believer in the shoulder hook. Are you hooking them on the back? I always shoulder hook. Shoulder hook. 100% okay. Thank you. Him in the back, and he's like, I always shoulder hook. That one tip from Steve was literally a game changer for the whole rest of the trip. It accounted for lots more bites because of the way that I was hooking my baits after learning that. This is good. You're on my side this time. <laughs> oh, that's how it works. Coming down. I'm gonna come under you. Coming over, coming over. Coming over. I got him, I got him. Color! Color! Thank you. Got him. Sick. Woo! Ah, Christian, thank you, bro. Look at that. Nice one, bro. All of a sudden. Yeah, so this is fishing day three. And first off, it's way flatter than it was the last two days. So first and second day, pretty high swell and low intervals in between, which just made, meant it was like a washing machine day and night. So that was definitely a challenge. And it was a challenge sleeping through that all night. <laughs> and we did find the fish in that nastier water. We found over a hundred yellowfin yesterday. I think it was like a total of 135. And we found a couple bluefin on day one. Well, 35 bluefin day one. No giants, no cows, but 
it's been good, but I wanted to do a quick update because I haven't been very good at that in this episode whatsoever. I haven't done what I normally do. With this calmer weather, it should be a lot easier to film and uh, let you guys in on what's going on. It's not supposed to be as windy either. The wind noise is probably terrible, but so far the Polaris Supreme has been an awesome boat. The captain, uh, Aliar, he is like always looking, no matter what, he's always looking um, day and night, just searching for fish. Right now we have three other boats in the vicinity kind of searching and they're all talking to each other. I'm sure it's tough when it's a huge, huge ocean and these pelagic fish can be anywhere. Right now we are deep into Mexico and we've traveled 80 miles last night, overnight, out of that southern region where we were getting those yellowfin and now we're heading north to try to find more bluefin. Um, there was one 100 pound bluefin caught in the middle of those yellowfin yesterday. So that was really awesome. It was funny because Bob throws out his uh, live bait and then captain says, all right, reel them in. We're gonna try somewhere else. But then he gets hooked up and then that just opened up a feeding frenzy. Like we fished there for like 20 minutes, no bites. And then as Bob was pulling out his live bait, boom, something took it. And then one, two, three, four, five more hookups after that. That was probably like a 40 fish stop right there. So man, it's been fun. It's been fun catching these smaller size. But last year, Henry got two bluefin over 200 pounds. So the expectation is like really, really high. But either way, we're having fun. And just the experience of being on a boat for five days, this one being day three, has been very, very interesting, but doable. There's two bathrooms that have showers on this boat and uh, one more uh, up top used for number ones only. <laughs> what other details do you guys wanna know? Uh, there's three square meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, plus dessert and salads and fruit and all kinds of stuff. There's an onboard chef that's always working, which is really, really impressive. But yeah, it is a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. It's not all easy. It's not all wide open fishing. Be prepared for a lot, a lot of just traveling. Although they do have Wi-Fi, so that's a really cool thing as well. But yeah, again, sorry for lack of updates. Hopefully this makes up for it. Give you guys more context of what's going on on the Polaris Supreme on one of these special Christmas trips that they do, five days. Boy, oh, look at that. As you're about to find out, day four is just incredible. The big ones started to show up. We ended up backtracking to where we came through and saw a little bit of sign, but Captain Aliar had a good feeling and it definitely paid off to come back to that area. While everyone was fishing the fly line, the boat ended up putting up a kite with a frozen flying fish and that usually gets the bigger ones. So this was on rotation based on your number you get to reel in the kite fish, and I was number seven. After losing one good fish, I ended up moving on to the big guns and making sure I don't lose another one. Oh, 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 there's a biter. Oh, again, guys, Steve hooked another one. Change your mix. Butter! Come on, guys, switch spots, switch, switch. Come on. Okay, come on up with that one. This one? Nice. Come, 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 come. Come in, come through. Come in, come in. Come down. That big dead. Coming down. Yeah, I shot it. Peter. How much do you have on it? Uh, about 25 feet. Color. 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 Hand, right? 
Thank you. Yeah. And that was the biggest for me so far for the trip. And as I brought that one in, Henry hooked up and he was number six, so we had to skip him. I got to take in the kite fish and it was a big one. All right, they're gonna hand me the kite. Got a fish on the kite. Moments after they set up the kite rig, we hooked another one. So now it's Henry's turn. You land is? I'm on it. He's on it. Henry. Oh, you're on the kite right now? Right now. Yeah, he's on the yeah, so we literally passed through the same area we passed last night, but there was no signs. And then passing through it in the day, just everything lit up. This is what we were excited all <laughs> year for, bud. <laughs> all year. Anticipation. So little known fact, Henry landed a 200 pounder on 30 pound line. What? This time he's on the right gear. Yeah, I'm on bigger gear this time. <laughs> no joke, Bill. No 30 joke. Pound, what? 30 pound line. Yeah, I was on 30 pound test and Allie said to uh -huh. upgrade it. But before I could upgrade it, I was winding up and that 200 pounder hit. It took me an How long did that take? An hour and 15 minutes. What? Kind of fish? Blue fish? Yeah, third place last year. Uh, uh, no, it was 30 pound fluoro. 200 pounds on the scale. Yeah, 208. Hey man, that's pretty impressive. Man. You're a rock star. Hey, it wasn't as nice as Steve's 233 though. Deep color. Got some color. <laughs> Henry Bully putting the wood on him. Oh my god! Oh. oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Now in 
full disclosure, we booked this trip a year in advance and we were so looking forward to this. Henry was spearheading this expedition, so I really appreciate Henry Bouley. Thank you so much, Henry. This was awesome. And the bite just continued. It was amazing. The rest of the day into the evening where I caught my first nighttime jig fish. So stay tuned for that. A bit of fresh one! Fresh one! Coming down, coming down. Let's see if I can bring this in before the GoPro battery dies. Coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. Yeah, baby. Coming down, guys, coming down, coming down. Keep going, keep going down. Coming down. Coming down. Up, 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 up. Go. Let's go, baby. Go, go. Got it. Woo. And Bob's on color. Nice oh, nice little, nice little. We just doubled, dude. Yeah. We just doubled. Woo. That's his, mine's being dragged over there, let's go. More, 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 more. We continued to fly line into the evening and once it got dark, we tied on our jigs to go for that big nighttime bite. So we continued up north and every time Captain Aliar would see a nice school that we could drop on, he'll stop the boat, we'll all go out and drop our jigs. Just wash, rinse, repeat. Keep doing that and then after maybe the third drop, here's what happened. Whenever the boat stops, it continues to slide forward. So every time we would get on a school of fish, we'd run to the bow of the boat and cast our jigs forward as it drifts back. Now, I want you to pay attention to my line. Normally, it would continue to slide back with the boat, but mine just kind of stayed in that area, which means I was already bit. I continued to slide down the rail towards the stern, but my line still stayed up towards the bow. So as I retrieve it going forward, I realize, you know what, I am big. Oh, I am now. Oh. oh, come on down, come on down. Go up and over. Hold on, hold on. Let's touch it. Back off your drag. By the tension on the line and the way this fish was running, I could really tell it was a big one. Dude, it bit shallow. He bit way shallow. Sick. On the retrieve, dude. I wanted to get that bite, dude. That was sick. Hell yeah. That was hella sick. What? I might have to go around. Yep. Let's go all the way down the all the way down the corner. Coming down the rail, guys. Walk his ass all the way down. Baby, this is why we stayed up. Line vertical, straight up and down. 
could get around them. Yes. Couple steps down. There he is, color. Keep winding, keep winding. This thing might make big circles, guys. I would maybe wind up a little. Okay. Coming up the rail, guys. Hundred. Hundred? Yeah. Is it in high gear or low gear? It's in low. Put it in high, yeah? Real quick? Yeah. yeah you're almost here, bro. Go back to the corner. Coming down the corner, guys. Put him in the corner. Rod tips up. Rod tips up. Coming up the rail, guys. Coming up the rail. We got a fish going. See, I'm pretty sure I want this fish here. It's under. It's under. There you go. There you go. Lift. 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 Okay. Go ahead. Big circle. Turn the handle. Turn it. Short little pump. On Bill's jig. Bill's jig. Bill's jig. Hey. Holy cow, that's a big one. Yeah. This is Bill, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. They call him Coach. That's right. And he let me borrow this jig that just landed. What you're gonna see? Come overboard. Back and forth, up and down. Let's go. Oh, number <laughs> seven. Seven. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Right there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! All right, it is the final day of fishing. Man, what an incredible, incredible time. Man, it started off, you know, nice and steady. Nice little appetizer fish. The ones that you can pull on that aren't gonna be too strenuous. So we ended up picking off a bunch of yellow fin because we weren't able to find the blue fin on the first day, really, that were willing to bite. So we kept on moving south into warmer waters and that's how we ran into those uh, yellow fin. But we did find some blue fin on the first day, but nothing crazy uh, but man just incredible uh, how all day yesterday we were on the bluefin i believe we are at 117 bluefin for the boat and limit is 144 due to the number of passengers on this boat so all in all it's been crazy i got my first jig fish last night too deep dropping and it was a good one. And as you saw, you saw a coach, he let me borrow a jig of his. And it's just really cool to see and learn from guys who've been doing this for a really long time and who really love tuna fishing the way that these guys do. A lot of us were up till one or two in the morning trying to get one more jig fish, one more jig fish. But it was a full moon yesterday and we feel like we got a bit more when the moon was behind the clouds. 
So that played a factor, but I've learned so, 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 so much on this trip. Let's see if we can catch a few more bluefin and uh, celebrate on the way home. We're gonna fish until one o'clock today. And then after that, we're gonna ride overnight back to San Diego. It's, we're like 24 hours away or a little bit less, probably about, probably about a 16 hour boat ride at least. So we have plenty of time to break down our gear, take a nap, be refreshed by the time we get back to San Diego around 5 a.m. <laughs> I didn't get much sleep this whole time, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it, guys. That's not coming out. <laughs> it's a wrap, folks. Literally, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> what a week. What a week of Christmas, fun fishing, <laughs> and cleaning. We literally left one party to go do this thing and then end it with another kind of party. It's a cleaning party. We literally had so much fish that we had to do all hands on deck and all the people I really would have given fish to like right off the bat all volunteered to uh, help and uh, many hands make light work we got it all done all that blue fin and yellow fin all processed to the highest degree and it's just such a satisfying feeling because you just know that you took really good care of the meat. It was never frozen. We had like poke and we already ate a bunch of it. We made some nigiri. Oh. Mm. So, with that said, the Polaris Supreme is amazing. The Hook to Cook family is amazing. 2023 was amazing. This was an, a heck of a way to end the year and 2024 is gonna be amazing. Thank you guys so much for joining along all year long. I appreciate it. My family appreciates it. And uh, everyone's gonna be eating good for a while. So if you guys wanna see more of this type of stuff, catching bluefin, um, trolling Mad Max, I will leave a link. A couple of videos right here where we're chasing this big game. We're gonna do this every year from now on because it's amazing. And don't worry, we're still gonna do our annual New Year's challenge. Last one to catch the
the first fish of the new year has to eat something gross. This year it's their stroming. Stay tuned. We'll catch you on the next one.